Hi guys, I'm Carla from Carla's Ceramics and welcome back to another throwing video. In today's video I will be showing you how to throw a little jar in one piece. So I will be starting off with throwing a closed form and later on I will be cutting this open to make a lid that fits perfectly on top of the jar. And it's quite easy to do so I hope you like it and let's just get started. I take a piece of clay and I smash this on top of the wheel. I first press it towards the middle to get it centered and then I fully center it by coating it up and pressing it down. You can repeat this multiple times until it's fully centered. Then I flatten it a bit and I open it up by pressing my middle finger into the middle of the clay. I press it downwards and then pull sidewards so that I have a straight and flat bottom. If necessary you can go over the bottom an extra time to make it thinner and to also smooth it out. Then I start pulling up the walls. I first press the clay towards the middle a little bit and then I take a sponge in my right hand and I press towards my left hand on the inside while making an upwards movement. And as you can see I make a movement from the bottom all the way down to the top and I start making a cylinder. And as you can see I try to leave the top a little bit inwards. Sometimes it becomes a bit too wide then I hold both my hands around it and I press the clay inwards. Because I will be closing the form at the top I don't want the top to become too wide. So after I pull up the clay a few times I press the clay at the top towards the middle. And then I go over it a few more times until the clay is nice and thin and then I start closing the form. I move my hands towards each other while moving them upwards and I press the clay at the top towards the middle. Then I go over the inside with a sponge to get rid of any water because you don't want any water in the piece. And when it's closed you can't get rid of this anymore so it's best to get rid of this at this point. And then I start closing the form completely. I do this by moving from the bottom to the top and pressing the clay at the top towards the middle. When you do this the clay at the top becomes a bit thicker because it becomes less white if that makes sense. So I sometimes pull up the clay a little bit more by going over it. When doing this I hold my left hand on the inside. And then I just close it by pressing the clay towards itself. And then what I like to do is make this little knot or this little button, I don't know what it's called, at the top. Because the top will be the lid, you can already make the lid in any shape you'd like. So I like to make a little bit of texture on top of here and this little ball of clay. So that you can easily lift the top. If you don't want this, you can also just leave it flat and then, for example, attach a handle later on. And then I take a loamer and go over the whole shape. Because the shape is closed it's a bit different to work with than you might be used to. Because there's air in the piece which can't get out. So you can't make it smaller or bigger so you have to work a little bit different. But by just practicing this and doing it more often you will get used to the way of working with a closed form. And then I cut away a bit of excess clay at the bottom. I use a wooden knife for this and I also use this knife to clean the bed a little bit. And then I go over the whole piece again with a wooden loamer to make it one fluent shape. But I will also be trimming away some more clay at the bottom. And I also use the wooden loamer to define the top part a little bit. And I decided to make an extra little ring of texture. This is just decoration, it's not necessary or has any purpose, it's just because I like the look of it. And it's nice to do it now instead of when trimming because the clay is quite thin. And then I go over the whole piece with a sponge to just smooth it out and get rid of any slip. And here I went over this little rim again with my thumb to make it a bit sharper. And I would recommend to make a hole in your piece when you're going to let it dry because the piece will be shrinking when drying. And when you make a hole in it the air can get out and the clay won't crack. Here's another little chart that I made. It's just another example to show you that you can just make it in any shape you'd like. The previous one was a bit pointy at the top but I decided for this one to make it a bit more flat and rounded at the top. So I just did this by pressing my finger on top of the clay downwards and for the rest I just did the same. So with this one I also went over it with a wooden loamer to get a nice and fluent shape. And then I went over it with a sponge to just smooth it out. And just like that you can make these pieces in a lot of different shapes. And then when the piece has dried for one day and it's leather hard I cut it off the bed and then I start trimming it and I will also be cutting off the lid. So that's what I'm going to do first. This is a bit scary but you have to do it to make a little jar so bear with me. Here I show you what I exactly do. This is the normal speed I do it so I didn't speed it up or anything. It's a bit boring but this way you can see that I just move very slowly so I don't press the knife into the clay very deep. I just let it turn and keep cutting deeper and deeper until the whole lid comes off. And as you can see I hold the little knife diagonally so I'm not holding it vertical because otherwise the lid would fall into the piece and that's not really how a lid works. So hold it tilted and then just slowly move it into the clay and sometimes you can just stop the wheel to see how far you've gone but just try to press it in very slowly. And I'm using a little knife but if you have a very sharp needle tool you could also use that. I would use something that is as thin as possible because the thicker the knife the more clay you will press aside if that makes sense. So you will press clay 
away from this part when the knife is thicker and that way the lid will actually fit less well so the better you want the lid to fit the smaller the knife you should use and here the lid was almost fully cut off so i let it turn even slower than i already did and then i pressed the little knife entirely into the piece to cut it off and then the lid is cut off and you have a little jar as you can see here on the inside my lid had a little crack at the bottom this wasn't really in the clay but more so the slip that was on top of this when closing it. I easily just got rid of this by going over it with a sponge since it's not all the way through it's just a top layer of slip that had a little crack in it. So I just went over it with a sponge and then that was fixed. Then what I like to do is place the lid on top of the pot and as you can see I use a very small trimming tool and just trim away a little bit of clay at the sides. This way I just round it a bit. Don't trim away too much clay because if you throw away too much clay the lid won't fit anymore. And then I go over the rim with the sponge and then I get rid of the slip created by the sponge by going over it with this trimming tool. This way I smooth it out and I don't have to sand it or anything. And then I go over it with my fingers to smooth it out even more. And then what I like to do, this is not necessary, but what I like to do is blow drying the rim. Because I just trimmed the rim, it was very soft and fragile. So by blow drying it with a heat gun, I can easily turn it around without scratching the rim. And then I just turn it around, place it in the given grip and I start trimming it. As you can see the bottom is a little bit wobbly from cutting it off the bed. This isn't a problem, I just go over it a few times with a small trimming tool to just smooth it out and make it centered. I like to use a very small trimming tool for this because that way you don't have that much friction with the clay and it's easy to keep your hand still. And then I used a bit of a bigger trimming tool to round the side here. I had some excess clay which you could also cut off while throwing, but I just prefer to do this by trimming it. Just like this I go over it a few times and make it a bit more rounded and get rid of some clay to make it a bit lighter. And I also take away some clay at the bottom to make a foot. Then I go over it with a wet sponge to smooth it out. And then I go over it again with this trimming tool to get rid of the slip that was created by the sponge. And then I go over it with my finger again. This just helps me to smooth it out. And then I again like to blow dry the bottom with a heat gun. This is not necessary but by doing this the bottom becomes a bit harder. And when you turn it around you won't get any scratches on the bottom. And then I start working on the lid. As you can see here it was a little bit sharp at the part where I cut it. So I just went over this with the wet sponge and smoothed it out. And then as you can see the lid fits perfectly on top of the pot. And then you have your little jar. And then it's ready to dry before biscuit fire. Then after it has been biscuit fired I started glazing it. I decided to glaze this one with iron yellow. This is the first glaze, I will be using another glaze later. I apply this on the inside and the outside of the pot and I apply three coats. And I'm also glazing the rim and the part where the lid will be on top of. I just like to glaze this, it's not necessary but if you just apply a little bit of glaze here the lid will still fit. So I just apply two coats at that part and of the rest of the pot I applied three coats. And I let the glaze dry in between coats. And I also glazed the lid with the same glaze. I also applied three coats on the inside and on the outside. But I'm not glazing the part where it touches the pot when putting it on top of it. If you do glaze this it might become too thick and then the lid might not fit anymore. So I don't glaze that part. And then I started applying the second glaze which is Indigo Float from Emiko. I applied it on top of the lid and also on top of the pot. And I'm not glazing all the way down to the bottom. And in this case I like to just leave the lid on top of the pot, this way I don't glaze the part where the two pieces come together. And I'm applying three coats. I've also tried this with only two coats, but with three coats the colors are nicer in my opinion. If you'd like you can use a heat gun to speed up the drying process. Because it's important to let the glaze dry in between coats and also before putting it in the kiln. For another little jar that I made, I used the same first glaze, so I first applied three coats of iron yellow and then I applied smoky mallow. And I also used three coats of this, but with this one I decided not to glaze over the part where the lid touches the pot. So as you can see I just leave a little rim unglazed here, which might give a nice effect in the end. Because I always get a little bit of glaze onto the pot at the bottom, I like to just get rid of this by going over this wet piece of fabric. So just press it down and twist it a little bit and just move it every time. And as you can see, less glaze comes off of it and then eventually it is clean and ready to go into the kiln. And I do the same with the lid. I will not place the lid on top of the pot in the kiln because otherwise they will melt together. So it's important that you can just place this onto the kiln shelf without it sticking to it. So I also clean this. And then they are ready to be glaze fired. Here are some pictures of the final results. I also made this other jar and I will put the different glazes from the different jars in the screen. Mm -hmm. 
that was it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it and learned something new from it. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And if you're going to make this little jar yourself, if you go to post it on Instagram, please tag me at Ceramics because I would love to see it. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!